What's going on? Thanks for joining me on this ride along video. Today we're gonna to be talking about ways of making your transmission last, specifically the CVT transmission. Now, a lot of the things I'm gonna talk about will apply to any transmission and by and large all these things are things that are just good to know anyhow it's some, some good knowledge to know but this video definitely is in the spirit of making the cvt transmission last whether you have a wrx whether you have this ascent that i'm in right now another subaru model with a cvt or any other manufacturer with a cvt transmission most of these tips will apply so please stick around before we get started if you find the video useful make sure you give it a like and consider subscribing for more content like this so let me get right to it Another thing that I want to mention that is very important is to come to a complete stop when you're changing directions, right? A lot of people have this nasty habit of when they're rolling out of a parking spot out of their driveway, they're rolling backwards going almost 5-10 miles an hour and they jam the car into drive and, and take off. That makes me cringe every time I see it. It's not good to do in any transmission, right? Because you're putting the entire weight of the car and that clutch that that reverse clutch or that reverse gear whatever reverse mechanism that particular car has you put in the entire weight of your car momentarily on that mechanism in a cvt it's even more important not to do that because all of that weight will go into your chain and your chain that we just talked about that's between the variators between the pulleys in a situation like that will stand a very high chance of slipping so as you're backing up the faster you're going um, the higher your chance that that you'll slip the belt when you abruptly put the entire weight of your car onto that belt okay very very important not to do that what ends up happening is that you might not have a catastrophic failure of your transmission right away 10,000 miles 20 30 even 50,000 miles down the road you'll get up one morning you'll get in your car you put it in gear and it'll take a little bit longer than usual to get from park to drive or from reverse to park or from reverse to drive, whatever the case might be. It'll take a little bit longer than usual and you'll wonder why. Or it might be a little louder than usual and it'll get progressively worse. And you, you'll have no idea why this is happening and that could be a very big reason why because the last two years you um, had a nasty habit of putting the car in drive whenever you were you know backing up at five miles an hour that mechanism is not there to be abused it's literally just meant to reverse the speed of the car right that's all you're doing it doesn't cost you anything to just come to a complete stop when you're reversing and you put the car in drive you can usually feel the car getting into uh, forward gear it takes a second maybe don't hit the gas until you hear the mechanism completely switch from reverse to drive and vice versa so the next tip that I want to give you in order to make your transmission last is to not lug your engine. So what does that mean? What does lugging your engine mean? Lugging your engine means that you're at a too low of RPM for the gear that you're in and the speed that you're, that you're going. So this is something that it's really prominent in manual transmissions because you have to obviously shift gears. You have to tell the car which gear is appropriate for the speed that you're going for your current driving conditions, right? Because you have to do that, you can very easily put the car in the wrong gear. You can put the car in a gear that's too high for your RPMs and lug your engine. You can usually tell you're lugging your engine because you hit the, you would hit the gas and the, it bogs down a little bit. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like it has any torque whatsoever. It's not a condition that you want at all. And it causes all sorts of issues with the engine. Um, now, I know most of the problems that stem from lugging your engine usually you know have to do with the engine of course but because the mechanism by which you do this is the transmission i want to cover that here because it's just important right so you might wonder how the heck can you lug an, an automatic transmission right how can you and especially a cvt how can you lug the transmission in a cvt well don't forget that a lot of cvts do have manual modes in which you select the gear right you select the the gear ratio for the car you stopping those pulleys at a preset place along the continuum and telling it hey stay here if you're telling the car to stay here at this preset ratio and that ratio is not appropriate for the rpms then you can lug your engine because you, your engine speed is going to be far too low um, for the conditions one condition that where this is common if you're on the highway and you're coming up on somebody at a considerable speed and they're going considerably slower than you so you hit the brakes to slow down and not hit them and then you decide hey i'm going to pass them and then you hit the gas aggressively to pass them if you don't downshift you will probably lug your engine and once you downshift you usually get your engine closer to a place where it could be efficient where you have enough rpm so that you have torque and so that you're not putting your engine in jeopardy of knock and jeopardy of up to an including catastrophic failure right 
So a lot of automatic transmissions, they have mechanisms to protect you from, from lugging your engine. Um, for example, like if you're in fifth gear, you know, your, your car's on manual and you're in fifth gear and you come to a complete stop, the car's not gonna stay in fifth gear. It's just not. It knows that if you try to take off in fifth gear that you can cause very serious damage and it prevents you from doing that. That's not the case with a manual transmission, right? Manual transmission, you could do that in a manual transmission. In an automatic with manual mode, the car's smart enough to know that that that's not really what you want to do it cannot possibly be what you want to do you don't take off in fifth gear you take off in first gear sometimes second gear depending on what car you have uh, but you take off in, in first gear and if you were to take off in fifth you would cause some serious damage the car will do that for you automatically some cars will even do it under other circumstances it just won't allow your rpms to drop that low it'll you know downshift for you if you're in manual mode just make sure you're at an appropriate uh, rpms for the conditions so that you're not lugging your engine because it is possible to do. So over time you can cause you know, serious issues. Another thing that I've talked about a little bit um, in previous videos is changing your transmission fluid. So the next tip is regardless of what anybody says, do change your transmission fluid. I don't care if somebody told you that the fluid is lifetime fluid, I don't care. Change your transmission fluid at regular intervals. In a car like the WRX, I wouldn't let it go past 60,000 miles without changing that transmission fluid. Okay, that's, that's just a personal thing. And depending on how you drive your car, you might go down to 30,000 miles, 40,000 miles. You know, it, it all depends on how you drive your car. You have to do an honest assessment of your own driving habits and what you do with your car in order to kind of determine when would be a good time to change your transmission fluid. And with that comes another caveat. Don't change your transmission fluid at these quick lube places, right? I know it can seem tempting. I know a lot of times they have these deals, but these quick lube places do not have the best reputation when it comes to, you know, just ethics in general right so a lot of these places are just ran by some shady people and they use practices that are just kind of messed up right so you know, upselling you um, a lot of times there's investigations that have gone on and discovered that these people they're not changing your oil at all they're just telling you that they're changing it uh, if you go and tell them to put in full synthetic you know you're not gonna get full synthetic I don't want to say that none of these places are honest I'm sure some of them are honest just personally I would not take that chance there's another reason for it and that's because cars especially sports cars like the WRX right Right, has a very specific type of high torque CVT fluid. Even within Subaru, there are a lot of different CVT fluids that are used. I would not expect these quick loop places to know which, which kind, and I would not expect them to do their research either. They're probably gonna go use whatever CVT fluid they may have on the shelf, and they'll probably put that in, in any car that comes through that asks for a transmission fluid change if they even do, that, do it to begin with. So to protect yourself, don't take your car to one of these places Take your car to a reputable mechanic or to a Subaru dealer and, you know, do your research yourself, right? Figure out, again, I'm going to talk about these TSBs, right? In the TSBs, there is a, a fluid TSB that tells you all of the fluids that go into all of these vehicles. Pull up that TSB, save it onto your computer, and that way you always have it. And you can go and take a, you know, take a picture of it with your phone when you go and get your transmission fluid changed and be like, make sure that it's this transmission fluid. Make sure this is what goes into my car. The next thing I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about very briefly because I've just beat this to death on my channel. I have several videos, so I'm gonna link in the video description and, and a card up above to more in-depth discussions about monitoring your transmission temperature and installing a CVT cooler. This is really gonna be more the case for those of you who have the WRX with a CVT transmission, and it's not always the case that you need the CVT cooler. But this video would not be complete if I don't mention the fact that it's important to monitor your transmission temperature if you feel like you drive in such a way that you spend a lot of time at high transmission temperatures because if you do that you can cause premature deterioration of the transmission fluid which eventually will lead to some sort of issue eventually it'll lead to de deteriorated seals and once your seals deteriorate you cause seepage of the transmission fluid and and other issues in the transmission so it's important to monitor your temperature and if you feel like you spend a lot of time at high temperatures install a CVT cooler to mitigate that problem right I'll link up above to a video in which I discuss everything you should know about the CVT cooler and the WRX, the installation and why you need it and the role that the CVT fluid plays in the transmission. And I'll also link to a video showing the complete installation of a CVT cooler in the WRX. So make sure you check those out so you can get an idea of what it entails. Just ensure that you do that because I don't want to cover all that information again in this video. 
just be sure that you are mindful of your transmission temperature because that is the single highest cause of failure for any transmission, not just CVTs. All transmissions will eventually succumb to heat if you don't mitigate that. That's why cars that tow will usually have external transmission coolers. When you're modifying your car, you're stage two plus, and you're pushing your transmission, you're pushing your engine, so you're, you're building up a lot of heat in that transmission fluid, and if you don't find a way to dissipate that heat, you'll cause premature deterioration of the fluid. Check those videos out. And the final thing I'm going to mention in this video is to be very mindful of using manual mode. All right, why do I say that? The WRX has CVT modes and it has step modes, right? And in step modes, it stops the pulleys at preset ratios to, to simulate gears, which is great. But what happens if you're at one of those preset ratios and you slam on the gas and you're pushing, you know, 300 foot pounds of torque? What do you think happens? You're putting all of that power in one spot of that variator of that pulley right i would imagine that eventually if you continually do that over time you're going to cause scoring right you're going to cause scoring in those spots in the variator this is something that makes complete sense to me uh, and, and if you just think about it you just, just visualize putting all the power that your car has into one spot you, you got to remember there are no teeth because there's no actual physical gears in this transmission so the the belt the high the high torque chain and the pulleys there's no teeth between them locking them in place so there is a possibility that your transmission can slip when you're slipping you're literally moving that high torque change independent of the pulleys and when you do that you can scar those pulleys in that location once you do that you know if you don't have an issue right off the bat it's only a matter of time before you do have issues my only point here is that if you're adding a lot of power to your car just be mindful of the way that you drive your car i'm not saying don't use manual mode because if you couldn't use manual mode uh, the, the mode shouldn't be there to begin with right i'm not saying that at all don't get me wrong you can use your manual mode have fun with your car enjoy your car i don't want to be alarmist all i'm saying is just be, be mindful of it right if you're pushing a lot of power then you might want to stay away from putting all that power through one of those preset ratios so take all that for what it's worth i hope you got something out of this video most of these things are free things that you can just just behavior modification right things that uh, you can just change the way that you drive or change a habit here and there and it could potentially save your transmission from premature failure so thanks a lot for watching and sticking through if you got to the end of the video i, I appreciate it i really hope you got something out of it my channel is growing i have a lot of uh, different types of content in my channel so make sure you check it out for more useful videos and consider subscribing thanks a lot for watching i'll see you next video